Hello everyone and welcome back to Quora's Reptile Park. My little mini zoo submission entry for the Bro Nation quarantine competition. So yeah, if you didn't watch the first episode where I built the monitor exhibit, the rest the restroom, the gift shop and I think yeah the entrance, definitely go check that out before you watch this. But anyway, in today's episode we are building the restaurant area and the exhibit for Eldabra giant tortoises. So yeah, neither of those things seem too glamorous, I guess. It's not like anything major like crocodiles or snakes and whatnot, but I think I think they both came out a lot better than I expected. A uh, lot better than what I had planned in my head anyway. So yeah, for the restaurant area we obviously have the uh, a food stand and a drink stand because those are the two requirements of the of the competition. You need to have uh, I think the facilities you need to have a uh, restaurant, restroom, info desk. I don't think I actually have most of those down. I think actually I've filled in all the minimum requirements because you need one exhibit which I have with the iguana and then two habitat animals so I have the volatiles and I put the tortoises in but obviously I'm still gonna do a lot more because I think I've only like pulled, pulled up less than half the map so we're gonna make the big old crocodile exhibits and the major reptile house so I think next episode will be crocodiles and then the episode after that or probably the last episode will be the reptile house I don't know I want to save the reptile house for last so yeah anyway with this uh, restaurant I'm doing here you can see I have the two main areas in the front and what I try to do is have a like little collection window on the side obviously the guests can't use it because the game doesn't work like that you don't go and collect order at one place and collect in, collect in another but I just thought it was a cool little extra detail but yeah and I do mess around with the three meter parts here for this uh, wheelchair path so it might be a little steep I couldn't get it a bit I couldn't get it more gentle because it's very finicky working with those three meter paths. But yeah, I I, I tried. It, it looks it looks okay, I guess. It it's acceptable. It's a it's, yeah. But anyway, the restaurant architecture I kind of went similar to the entrance area. Just so you know, it's like same area, so they have the same architectural style. Only I differ it a little bit. Instead of having the wooden, like the dark wooden walls, I think now they're plaster, but later I change them into the, the like some of those bamboo pieces to look like, like a lighter wood color. So yeah, yeah, there is no interior for this exhibit, I'm afraid, because uh, I want to do make sure I want I want to try and get everything done on time because this entire the entire map is due the 25th of April. Yeah, so. I, I just want to make sure I get everything done on time, so I'm, I'm not going to focus too much on interiors. If I have extra time, then I will add an interior kitchen for this building, but for now it's just an empty space with the two food stalls. Uh, so yeah, like, like I said, maybe come back last episode and you'll see some interiors will be there, but otherwise I, I can't promise interiors. I do, I just want to make sure everything is done and an interior is kind of the last thing on my list. But anyway, uh, I do add like a little wooden deck to the side there. Maybe you can see kind of the startings of it in the background of the time lapse. Now, now I'm working on the pathing, but yeah, you can see that little wooden area. So yeah, there, there will be a few seating areas overlooking the crocodile exhibit. So you can watch the crocodiles while you eat. I'm not sure what species of crocodile I'm going to go with. I think either... Well, I mean, there is only one in the game. There's uh, the saltwater crocodiles. I'm gonna put those down, but I don't know if I'm gonna pretend they're just Nile crocodiles because saltwater crocodiles are very territorial, so you can only have one in an exhibit or one or two. Whereas Nile crocodiles, you can have a whole bunch, and I kind of want a whole bunch, so I might just put them down and pretend they're Nile crocodiles. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But anyway, as you can see, uh, yeah, working more on the restaurant, adding in those fake windows, I added to the bathroom area last episode because uh, there's no interior. If, they, if I do do the interior I will take out those walls and have actual windows into the place but now yeah fake windows it is. Sorry about that. 
so I believe yeah there's gonna be a cut about now yep there it is so yeah what I start doing is adding this little glass viewing viewing can I yeah a little glass wall here so people can look into the crocodile exhibit which yeah next episode should be the crocodile I think I mentioned that already first so yeah using those awesome new uh, glass panel pieces that Frontier gave us and then just add my own little border on it actually quite nice I'm really glad they added those those pieces I don't know why they weren't in base game we were in planet coaster for a while so there's quite a few things in planet coaster that aren't in this game and I, just, and I don't understand why they're not but anyway adding the little uh, working on the wooden platform I mentioned earlier so my thought is maybe this platform was added in later in the park's uh, development like maybe they made a little concrete restaurant area and then afterwards they decided hey let's add this this little platform next to it or even if the platform wasn't added the little structure I built on top of it maybe it was added because uh, you will see I built like a little thatch area seating area and that does that it's 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 not a modern theme or anything so it doesn't match the the, uh, the rest of this uh, park's theme but it kind of works anyway and I do leave a little bit of space on the right hand side or as as it is now on the right for a little little something special that you'll see next episode I'm not gonna tell you right, right now it's, it's a <coughs> uh, crocodiles are black <coughs> oh, sorry I think I had like a spoiler or something stuck in my throat but yeah anyway uh yeah, so I'm, I'm not too sure what I, else I can add to this commentary. I guess I could talk about the tortoises, because you will see those, I think, in a few minutes they come into the time-lapse. In, like, a, a few minutes or so. So I, I went with the Aldabra giant tortoises, which do hail from the Aldabra Atoll, but they are very frequent in captivity. Like, I haven't, I haven't ever seen Galapagos giant tortoises, but I have seen uh, lots of Aldabra giant tortoises in... I think where have I seen them? I have seen them in zoos in South Africa and then also in Mauritius. Yeah, fun fact, there used to actually be quite a few uh, species of giant tortoise in the in the Indian Ocean Islands. It's just that sailors really exploited them quite a bit. So because uh, tortoises are really easy to get food source because they they easy to maintain, they just they have lots of fat on them, lots of food I guess. Yeah, and so they just load them up with their ships, and you got a you got a food source while you're at sea. And unfortunately, that resulted in all but two of the giant tortoise species be remaining. Only only one from the Indian Ocean, which is the Aldabra giant tortoise, Galapagos giant tortoise, is in like on the other the western side of the world. So, but I believe Galapagos giant tortoises also had a problem of being loaded up onto ships and being sailor food. Yeah, yeah, you can see me working on this little, little thatch, I don't know, what, what do you call it, lapa, gazebo, little thatch area. And I do use the palm thatch, which is, it, which is very useful, I really like the colours on it, the only problem is that it has that bamboo uh, underside, and I really wish they made it flexi colour so you can change it, but what I ended up doing is taking some of the flexi colour bamboo pieces and kind of trying to cover some of the bamboo pieces under the thatch with it. Yeah, my thought with this little, this little uh, thatch area is it will be a rentable venue. So if you remember from the first episode, I had a little sign there saying you needed a venue, so this could probably be the venue people can rent if they, yeah, if they wanted to have a, like a birthday party or something. Then they can just come and use this venue there, hook it up, put some they have tables, you can bring your own food, or you can order food from the restaurant, and yeah. Otherwise, I guess it'll just be open for guests to come and sit on there. But I will, uh, yeah, like, I think, yeah, there's tables, yeah, you can see some of them, yeah, tables on the concrete part of the food court, and then I'll also have, probably have some picnic areas out in front, that big old grass patch, people can come and sit and picnic, so yeah. Oh, and now I'm finally working on the the, the Aldabra giant tortoise exhibit. So I do my little trick that I showed in the last episode, I think. Was it 
yeah, the last episode of Plaintain Zoo where I showed you can sink the gates in. Yeah, it's, it's really weird because, yeah, in this zoo, I can sink the gates in, the habitat gates, all the way down into the ground. I don't have to have any bits sticking out. Which actually looks quite nice, so now you don't have this ugly gate. But in Plaintain Zoo, and I didn't, I had to have some of it sticking out, so, yeah, I'm really not too sure what's up with that, but. Well, if it works here, I guess it works here. I'll try and see if I can get it to work in Clayton Zoo. But yeah, so now I add my own little custom gate so the keepers can get in. That way I don't have to deal with that big two meter long high door which wouldn't match at all. Yeah, the tortoises do get stuck in the ground, but eventually they will get spat out on the surface and then you can just unbox them. So yeah, I do recommend if you have animals that get boxed quite a bit, it's not a good idea to have your gate sunken in down, but I don't imagine the tortoises are going to get boxed that much. But anyway, uh, for the tortoises, what else do I add? Oh yeah, the I feel like this gate wouldn't really be used by the keepers that much. It's like, I guess only if you're moving tortoises in and out and you have like a little cart or something, but otherwise the fence I make is very low and you can just step over it so I imagine that's just what the keepers will do because tortoises aren't that dangerous an animal and hopefully guests will just have common sense to not walk in the exhibit. Oh and here's something I, I put, I put this little mud pool in the exhibit. I know it's not really an enrichment item that tortoises use but I know Aldabra giant tortoises they need like a little water source to wallow in so I did try and do that with the the, the, the normal water terrain thing but it wasn't working out that well. I wanted the small pool but the game doesn't, I don't think it likes small pools so. I added a little mud pit and tortoises, it acts as like a little water source that tortoises can go bathe in, wallow in. Although in game they don't, which I really, I really think Frontier should implement that because it's an important part for tortoises to, they, they need like a little water source to chill in. So, yeah, maybe in the future the Frontier will add that, I hope they do, but for now it's just a decorative thing. Like I, like I said, this, the one leniency we have in this competition is that we can turn welfare off, so I don't really care about tortoise requirements. This habitat in the end turns out to be too small of an area space for the tortoises. Anyway, the tortoises aren't happy with the plants, I think there's too many plants or something like that, even though, yeah, and terrain coverage as well it's really unrealistic in this game so I'm glad we can just ignore it for this yeah yeah you can see there the fence that I ended up building it's very low so for like any guest can just walk over it I'm really hoping guests just have decency well in real life you'd hope they have decency to not walk in and ride a turtle or sorry tortoise and technically they all yeah technically uh, all tortoises are turtles and but not all turtles are tortoises. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the taxonomy of, of testudines, but anyway. Do add some rocks against the fence, which hopefully will keep the tortoises, or deter the tortoises away from the fence, so no guests can reach their arm out and try and pet them, so. Oh yeah, and you may be able to see that for the walls of the this exhibit, or like the little barrier separating the guests from the tortoise, I went with the individual bamboo pieces all spread out like that. Yeah, I, I think that's quite a cool thing you can do because uh, the other jagged bamboo walls in game, but they are a little bit, the peaks, the troughs between the bamboo pieces are a little bit too wide. So yeah, have a bit more customizability. And also the bamboo walls, they like have the square edge at the top, which I don't quite like. I also, later on you'll see in the time lapse, I make a little bamboo wall for the tortoises. That kind, that's also made of individual bamboo pieces, which yeah, I quite I quite like these bamboo pieces. They work really well as like wooden sticks, not even just like not bamboo. So yeah, the, so the the ones that form the barrier wall kind of seem a bit like bamboo, but the one I make at the back of the exhibit really does seem like just a wooden wall. So I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the time lapse, I guess. So I'll just let the last few minutes of this play out. I will have a walkthrough thing where I'll explain what I did furthermore to some of the stuff I didn't have on the time lapse. But anyway, I'll, I'll check you then. You can watch the rest of the time lapse if you want or just skip forward. I don't care.
Yeah, check you in a bit. Okay, welcome to the walkthrough portion. As you can see, I have let guests in for the first time since the tutorial, so yeah, they, I think they're, they're doing quite well. They're just a few problems, you know, they're standing in the middle of the fence, so probably need to adjust this pathway a little bit, yeah. Also, the education thing, I'm not quite sure how that's working out. I've tried to hide boards in the... yeah, in in like the walls and stuff so I'm not sure if the guests actually see them or not but yeah I just well well uh, I'll see I think some, some of them are getting educated a little bit There's 20% I'll probably put some speakers and that down later on also maybe add some cameras for security that's something I forgot about but anyway let's look at what we built so we have our Eldabra giant tortoise exhibit here we got two of them even got a little shed for them to sleep in with some lights. And if I turn this to night, you will see that they do have this little heat lamp reddish hue to them. So yeah, if they if ever need some heat, they can come and sleep in there. Although I'm not sure if they see that as a sleepable area since both of them are sleeping outside. But it's the idea that counts. And of course, got a little a mud pool in here for them. And this is all concrete type of slope thing so it makes it easier for them to get in this whole area and I added a, a kind of makeshift food tray because the food trays in games they well I guess the one is a, the one that they will actually use is fine but I decided to make my own custom one a little wooden planks and put some leaves and a melon slice and like I said we do have a sunken in habitat gate which the keepers can use well, the keepers can enter this exhibit, it does connect up to the path here. Actually, let me give you a demonstration of how we to put an animal inside of this. So, go to the market, grab a tortoise, send to zoo, set schedule it for this exhibit. There's a caretaker coming in, he sinks in the ground, drops the animal down. Unfortunately, it does sink into the ground and. Oops. But. Okay, wait, wait. Camera troubles, camera trouble. Okay, eventually, as it, it does sink into the ground, but it does pop back up on the surface. And what you can just do is unbox. And boom, it's fine. So. Keepers do struggle a little bit getting out, but eventually they will sink to the ground, go through the gate, and pop back right up. Yeah, if you have animals that get boxed up a lot, you don't want to use this because they will get boxed up underground, but yeah, animals that don't get boxed up, it's perfectly fine. Hey. Okay, anyway, let's go check out the restaurant. So, I did add these green tiles. These are just switches, I believe. Yeah. The in-game switches just recolored to look like tiles. I know Remnant did something similar in his Balboa Zoo only use the like blue tiles so I went to the green tiles to make it more match a bit more of the reptile park since reptiles are you know, green is a colour you associate with reptile and it's a bit more naturalistic the green colour. So we've got some benches here we've got some benches here. Guess obviously can't use these I'm afraid. I couldn't put actual in-game benches in the spot because of the way the parts laid out. And we've got some planters behind there, some custom cycads and ferns and bushes. We've 
of my tables up here with some umbrellas. Like these, these are actual parts, uh, benches the guests can use if you check this part, you can see the benches and guests can sit on there. Although I haven't seen any sit on there just yet, but they should, in theory. Yeah, this is a surprisingly few guests up here. I did limit the guests to 500, but it still seems a lot more crowded than what this place will realistically be. I suppose once I add more stuff that in, they will spread out. It won't seem as packed, but anyway. We've got a pizza pen. This is a custom font by Ricey. I believe this is a, a mini font. I'm not sure what the exact name is, but it will be in the, dis the description, so go check that out. Come and order here, can order our juice, can order our pizza, then go and collect here. So the idea is you stand on the right here, you queue here, and you can just wait and go and collect it. So it's closed now because no interior. Like I said, if I have time I'll add it, but otherwise it's just gonna stay this little closed thing. And the reason why I want people to queue here is so that when you collect your stuff, you can just easily walk out here. And also if people want serviettes or condiments get these little sauces here then you can get it easily so yeah and here we have our, our little shelter a little flat shelter got a bunch of benches people can sit down on and like i said if you wanted to book this venue if you need a venue you can come and book it here also have the reptile shows up here it's the same poster that was up at the entrance so just show people that they can uh oh, someone's throwing trash on the floor already come on guys yeah, just to show people, you know, while you're eating, be like, ooh, there's a snake show at this time. Let's eat, finish, and go see the snake show. Also, no smoking sign. This is made by Mob Long. He has, like, a bunch of custom uh, workshop items. He, I use the no smoking sign and the the, 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 the handicap sign. It's a wheelchair access road. So, yeah. Use this. Link will be in the description for his workshop items. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, and as you can see, I have little lights on the pathway, so I do did work on lighting again. Let's plop this over to night time. You can see we have a path nice and lit up here. Got some little lights on the benches, lights on the stairs, and I put some lights uh, on the building and lights up here. And I did sneak in some of these uh, floor lamps, these area lamps just to make the place a little bit more brighter. But yeah, this area will be crocodile, uh, crocodile pen, pen, pond, whatever. Crocodile exhibit so people can sit and watch the crocodiles. I just got to mention, the eucalyptus, this little, what's supposed to be eucalyptus, that credit goes to Mike Sheets, this is a custom tree, made by diamond leaf willow bushes and branches. Yeah, the African branches and air plants. So, yeah, I think he, get, he Mike Sheets came up with that. Almost forgot to give credit to him, but yeah. Yeah, and this little garden area in the front here. Yeah, I still, I still have some work to do on there. This little picnic area, I'll do in another episode. So, uh, I think I might do it with either the crocodile exhibit or the reptile exhibit, or I might have a whole separate episode for just the picnic area and the reptile show area. I'll see, I'll see what, what the future holds. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next episode. Bye!